last December we did a video slash article on the band, so this month we want to put our focus on the chains. I don't want to get too detailed into the benefits of the chains because it will be touched on in the article, but really quickly I'll say that some of the reasons to use chains in training are to accommodate the strength curve. <laughs> By that I mean with just about every motion there's going to be a certain time where <clears throat> the strength curve will diminish. The, mo the, the movement becomes easier at the top, say if it's a bench press or a squat. That's why you can half squat and half bench press more than what you can full bench press. So the concept with the chains are to try to balance that strength curve a little bit and to make that <clears throat> more challenging and to bring up that mini max if it's a sticking point in that area or body part. Another way you can use the chains, which we'll show you with setup, is to work on the stability of the muscle or the movement that you're trying to work. A lot of people will have a hard time getting locked in for the bench press at the top and the same for the squat or they'll have problems in the bottom of the squat where they can't maintain their balance or follow. There are certain applications you can use with the chains to address stability as well. The chains will teach one to generate more force. This is especially true with beginners and novices and it's even true with more advanced guys, but not so much as you're going to find lower down the spectrum. By that I mean one of the hardest things to teach people to do in a squat or a bench press is to use compensatory acceleration or to press with as much force as they possibly can. They just stand up with the same speed and force as if they were, I don't know, walking or there's, there's, there's no change. They don't understand the concept of trying to explode through something. So when you add the chains to the movement, it deloads at the bottom. Then if they try to stand up in the squat as slow as what they normally would or without force, they're not going to be able to come all the way to the top. So they're going to basically be shoved back down and then realize, oh shit, I should have used more force and stand up more explosively. So the chains can help teach <clears throat> the development or the the neural aspect of contracting with more force. It, in theory, the same concept should apply to pushing back the, de the deceleration phase of any movement. Any movement that you do do has to stop at some point in time unless it's a medicine ball throw or a plyometric. So if you're bench pressing, at some point in time it does have to stop. So somewhere along that strength curve you have to begin to decelerate. If that point where you begin to decelerate also happens to be where you have a mini max or you have a sticking point, you're gonna fail. In theory, the chains are gonna teach you to be able to apply that more force all the way through to a greater period. So, in, like I said, in theory, it may be able to push that back. I'm saying in theory because I don't know I haven't seen scientific studies to prove that in any way. This is just kind of hypothetical logic that I'm throwing out there because you have an increasing load as you press. You don't have that chance to try to decelerate at the same part of the movement as you normally would. Chains will also teach you to lower the bar faster. This is a really big problem with, um, with bench shirts. It's not so much a great problem with raw bench pressing. But it can be, because you will see that there are some lifters that will just lower the bar very, very, very slow. They're timid, or if it's a bench shirt, they're fighting against the bench shirt. With the chains, they take it out, they have you know, 100 pounds more plus at the top. As soon as they break their elbows and lower, that weight's being deloaded onto the floor, so the confidence increases and they're gonna be able to lower the bar faster. This is an important point when you're speaking about reversal strength and explosive strength coming out of the bottom of a movement. The chains will allow you to get used to heavier loads. As stated, you can set the chains up, you can go as heavy as you want, you can have 500 pound of chain, 400 pound of bar weight, so you stand up, you're actually holding 900 pounds, but as soon as you squat down to the bottom of the squat or a box or whatever you're squatting on, then it's going to be deloaded back down to that 400 pounds. So you're getting used to the 900 pounds <clears throat> on your back, but yet you're not having to deal with the, the training of that load over the whole range of motion. The chains can also be used for um, 
injury management as I almost break my ankle right now. Um, <clears throat> this I've kind of found with myself over the years. If, if I had a pec strain or somebody else had a pec strain, instead of doing any type of dynamic, dynamic or explosive benching or just regular bench pressing, if we use chains with bar weight, so if they use 225, now they're going to go down to 95 or 135 and two or three chains per side. That has less strain on the injured area, which allows me to train through the injury. I'm saying allows me because I'm not a doctor and I'm not a therapist and I can't prescribe any type of rehabilitation. All I'm doing is stating what's helped me in the past with shoulder injuries and pec injuries. One of the first things that I did if I did have any type of pec strain or shoulder problems is I immediately moved off a straight weight and went into training with chains and problem cleared up within one mini cycle, so three to six weeks. It can also, the chains can also help with motivation and confidence because as I spoke before, of the heavier loads can be utilized. The other thing with the motivation and the confidence is with uh, kids and novice lifters, high school lifters, they're fun. You know, the chains are rattling, they're making noise, they think it's cool to lift chains. So, you know, if that's what it's gonna take to enable them to lift harder, work harder, to apply more force and to develop stability, then, you know, I'm all for it. So there's definitely an application for that. Before we move on to showing how to set up the chains with specific movements, I wanna to touch on really quick how much the chains weigh because this will be important when I start explaining how some of the setups are. With the chain setup that we have, the easiest thing to do is to just say each link weighs approximately one pound. That's the no-brainer power lifter side of me. <laughs> but if you want to know exactly what it weighs, each side of the chain setup is going to weigh 18.2 pounds. There's 29 links and one hook. So figure 30 hooks divided by 18.2, we're dealing with about 0.6 pounds per chain. This will make more sense when I start showing how to hook the chains up and what the actual deloading is. So for ease of mathematics, we're just gonna say that each link weighs one pound. 